Sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us pause and confess our sins. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy those who do not follow the counsel of the wicked, nor go the way of sinners, not sit in company with scoffers. Rather, the law of the Lord is their joy. God's law they study day and night. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your Son taught us that we become truly rich by giving, not receiving, and that earthly praise is worth little. Help us to have confidence in your love that in times of difficulty we may persevere in goodness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Read food, 
book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He's like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the water that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual put no trust in princes, in mere mortals powerless to save. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth. That day all their planning comes to nothing. Reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You're still in your sins. Those who have fallen asleep, then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. For if this life only we have hope in Christ, we are the most pitiful people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. The Lord withholds no good thing from those who walk without reproach. O Lord, Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground, and a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon and raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and weep for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will weep and grieve. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Yet venge of Philonius Christus. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as you have come into the church this day, you realize that there are a couple things that are different. First of all, there is purple that is on our altars as well as on our candlesticks. Today, I am wearing rose-colored vestments. Today, there are liturgical changes. There is no Gloria, there is no Alleluia verse, and even the, the dismissal is different. For today is the first Sunday of pre-Lent. Approximately two and a half or close to three weeks in which we reflect on a different topic, and that is preparation. You know, I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to watch the Olympics. I know this is something that I kind of look forward to every every four years between the summer and the winter. I'm kind of drawn toward the winter, and believe it or not, I enjoy watching the figure skating. When you stop to think about the preparation that these athletes from around the world have to go through, sometimes seven days a week for hours and hours honing their own skills, which allows them to compete with the rest of the world's athletes, to vie for only three medals that are available, gold, silver, and bronze. And so it is a tribute that we pay to those who are a part of the Olympics. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Today is also Super Bowl Sunday. And I don't know if you are a football fan as I am, but I have thoroughly enjoyed over the years watching the playoffs and leading into the Super Bowl. Some have said that this year's playoffs were probably some of the best football that we have seen for many years. I think especially of the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills that it basically came down to a coin toss of who was going to move on. And so one of the largest gatherings will be Super Bowl Sunday. And it speaks volumes of people that have actually worked day in and day out to hone their skills. Well, my brothers and sisters, the season of pre-Lent again uses the theme of preparation. It is a time in which, starting around the 6th century, that people began to prepare for the Great Lent. And we, as well as the Anglicans and the Orthodox and other Christian denominations, still use the season of pre-Lent as a form of a preparation. And what is that preparation? It is to first of all make a true examination of one's conscience. To kind of measure where your personal spirituality is. I remember growing up, as I'm sure many of you remember growing up, that there was a place in the house where as you grew year after year there was another mark that was placed to kind of show you growing, or one growing, and also maturing. And so my brothers and sisters, the season of pre-Lent is a time of preparation in which we not only make an examination of our conscience, but we also seek to grow 
in our own spirituality. This past Thursday, I had the opportunity to give a presentation to those who had gathered at the Eastern Diocesan Virtual Bible Study. And that's exactly what we had talked about, and this is what I presented, the importance of the season of pre-Lent. This, in the year of 2022, our church has dedicated the year to the Holy Eucharist. We are a Eucharistic community. We all gather at the table of the Lord, and those who are able to receive and encouraged to receive have a special communion with Christ through his body and his blood. And this is one of the things that I pointed out in my presentation. You know, today's gospel, next week's gospel, Sexagesima Sunday, and the final Sunday of pre-Lent, Quintagesima Sunday, speaks of the gospel of Jesus as written by St. Luke. In the Holy Gospel, there are only two places where Jesus gives great discourse to the multitudes. One is found in the Gospel of Matthew, and the other in St. Luke. And there are parallels that exist between Matthew and Luke. Matthew is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Luke is referred to as the Sermon on the Hill. And each of these readings for this week and for the next two weeks are taken exclusively on the Sermon on the Hill in which our Lord instructs and gives direction. We speak of Jesus giving great, great spiritual truths, but he also gave a standard of morality and the way we should act. Therefore, what he has done is to set a high mark. The central theme of Holy Mass is the offering up of the bread and wine which becomes the body and blood of Christ. And there is an association between bread and the word of God. Did not Jesus in his first temptation, where he was given the opportunity of changing bread from stone, what, he, what did he say? Man does not live by bread alone, but only from the word of God. And in our church, we have placed the Word of God at such a high standard that back in the late 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, our first prime bishop, Francis Holder, made the Word of God as a sacrament. To be on the same level as baptism and confirmation and the rest of the sacraments. Because Bishop Holder believed that each and every single sacrament had its own sanctifying grace and its own separate sacramental character. And the word of God, my brothers and sisters, is the bread by which we grow. Jesus represents the living bread, but his teachings are also meant to be living, is to be the standard of our own lives in seeking the Lord. We find that before we know it, life comes to an end. As we get a little bit older, it seems as though we are coming closer to that calling of God back unto our own spiritual home. And so, my brothers and sisters, preparation is the key of the season of pre-Lent. May we dwell and meditate and reflect upon the Word of God because it is for us our sanctification and our salvation as offered by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Christus. <laughs> I believe.
even one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Offer fitting sacrifice and trust in the Lord. Receive, Father, Almighty and eternal God, this immaculate host, which I, your worthy servant, offer unto you, my living and true God, for my countless sins, offenses, and omissions, for all dear present, for all faithful Christians living and dead, that this sacrifice may avail me and them unto salvation and life everlasting. Amen. O God, Lord God, you endued us with great dignity and worthiness through Jesus Christ, you exalted, renewed, and sanctified us. Grant that through this faithful of wine and honor we may become worthy partakers of this holy mission in which our Savior gives himself to be with the man and in the teeth of the truth who has himself with Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May we accept the sacrifice from your hands and the praise and glory of His name for our good and the of the Holy Church. Amen. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, we offer you these gifts together with our hopes and fears. Hear us when we call upon you, and bless us with the gifts of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks. Father, O powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. You who give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and contemplation of your holy passion. As we prepare to abstain from worldly trappings, open our hearts and our minds to the spirit of true contrition. Therefore, we need join this day with the voices of the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. All those who are suffering from the coronavirus and pray not only for their well-being, but also for their families. Let us, dear Lord, offer you our prayers of thanksgiving for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and all healthcare workers who strive daily to save others. My dear brothers and sisters, in our most humble prayer, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we offer our prayers to Almighty God and pray that he would watch over and protect all those who serve in our armed forces both here and abroad. Let us pray for peace in the Ukraine. And may we also pray this day, O Lord, for each other, for all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the Mary of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. 
May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God. We ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, and which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your own divine majesty, from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, May be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, the Lord and all who rest in Christ grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, like and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit.
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done all on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil from all evils past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, Forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and vow safe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father, in the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We will take We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. My brothers and sisters, at this time, for those who, who will not be receiving, let us offer this act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. 
I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to
Lord, what we have received onto our lips, may we receive mentally. And may this simple gift be given to us in our last name. Amen. Let's stand and sing this Is tested. He is the shield to those who take refuge in him. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Omnipotent Father, through the grace of this Holy Communion, help us to place our soul trust in you that we may live and spread your holy word. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you most holy trinity grant that the sacrifice which we go and worthy have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen, amen. may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. the lord be with you also you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lord, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being. Apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name who were begotten, not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Amen. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers and sisters, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 